that none of these works of art will be sold, given, or exchanged, but are to be retained in the place described above, exclusively assigned to them in perpetuity for exhibition and study. Hi, this is Anita from 5 Minutes with Art. Today I want to talk about abstract expressionism, or in particular, Clifford Steele. When most people think about the great abstract expressionism artists, they think about Jackson Pollock, uh, Mark Rothko, or they think about uh, William de Kooning. But a lot of people wonder, like, who is this Clifford Steele? You know, whenever anybody talks about the color field painting for abstract expressionism, they always mention Clifford Steele, but yet we don't really hear that much about him. And there is actually a reason why. You know, Clifford Steele is considered to be one of the greatest abstract expressionism artists who's ever lived. In fact, Jackson Pollock said, Clifford Steele makes the rest of us look academic. But yet Clifford Steele, on the other hand, he was kind of a little bit of an interesting character. He was extremely talented, very gifted. And I have to say, looking at his artwork, I love it. I'm fascinated with him as an artist. And I, I really feel like his work is probably not as appreciated as much as it should be. And there's a reason for that, because Clifford Steele kind of like he... He moved away from New York City. He was there for a while. He didn't really trust art gallery owners. He didn't really trust, didn't like art critics at all. In fact, he called you know art critics things like scum. He called them as no good. He, he didn't really trust any art gallery owners. And in fact, he would have, you know, gallery owners would come to him in New York City and places and try to buy some of his art. And he'd just say, nope, I won't sell to you. So he really didn't sell a lot of his art, or he refused to sell a lot of his art. He, in fact, you know, he gave some away to museums, even which which is even more interesting. But he, you know, he really didn't always sell his art to anybody who wanted to have it sold. In fact, he he was friends with Mark Rothko for a while, and then he complained because he thought, you know, Mark Rothko, you know, sold himself out. He became too commercialized, and, and Mark Rothko said, "Well, I've got a family to support, so I need to." So for him, it wasn't so much about the money, it was really about the art, which really made him a very interesting artist. So when he died, about like nine, over 90% or like something like 95% of his art was still intact, was still, he still owned that art and hadn't sold it and hadn't, you know, hadn't given it away. So basically all this art of his was sitting there in his barn in, in Maryland and, and here he is, he's considered one of the greatest abstract artists to have ever lived. But his barn, his art was basically sitting in the barn or sitting in his house and was basically unseen. And in his will, he very specifically said that I give and bequeath all the remaining works of art executed by me in my collection to an American city that will agree to build or assign and maintain permanent quarters exclusively for these works of art and assure the physical survival with the explicit requirement that none of these works of art will be sold, given, or exchanged, but are to be retained in the place described above, exclusively assigned to them in perpetuity for exhibition and study. So in other words, he didn't want his art sold. He didn't want it to go on to auction. He didn't want it to go out there and you to be out there in into the art world. He wanted a city in the United States somewhere to take his art and to basically put it in a museum and to continue and to study it and to exhibit it. So when he died, it was his wife, Patty, who was assigned with this task. And, a, and then she finally settled on the city of Denver, which is really an interesting story. I've written a blog about it. I'll put a link below where you can read about it, where now there's a Clifford Steele Museum in Denver, Colorado, which exclusively shows his works of art there. So here it is, one of the greatest art, abstract expressionism artists to have ever lived that has his own museum in Denver, Colorado. So if you want to see his works of art, that is where you need to go to see it. 
This is Anita from 5 Minutes with Art. We hope you've enjoyed this podcast. If you'd like to learn more about Clifford Steeles, you know, read some of our blogs about him. He really is a fascinating artist, and his artwork is fantastic. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate Rico and for making these podcasts possible. Without our technical team, this would not be possible. Thank you so much.